Okay, today we're going we're gonna to really conclude the series, What's Missing? And in our, in our society, there's, there's something missing. We've seen, we've discussed this, the depression has gone up. Even though science is becoming, I mean, they're, they're, they've come up with so many inventions. And, and we're, we're talking about psychologists are, are understanding the mind so much better. And there's so many resources we have now. We have more things available to us. But yet as a society, we're becoming more depressed. Our relationships are suffering. Um, if we look at our society, um, our families are falling apart more than ever. People are having a hard time just even getting along. Uh, we're even seeing this, this spirit of division that even would tr try to come into the church where the church would no longer be united, it would be divided. So we're looking at our society and people, more people than ever are addicted to drugs. There's more people than ever that are committing suicide. And we're saying, man, what? There's just a whole bunch of violence. I just, I just got a call. I mean, I just found out just now that one of our youth leaders, his, his brothers just got shot in a, in a drive-by last night. And one of them's dead. And the other one's in the hospital. And when I think about that, we just had two, week, two three weeks ago, we had a, a shooting on the streets right ne pretty close on Sierra Way, close to our downtown campus. And two brothers again got shot, and both of them were killed right in front of their mother. And when I, when I, when I see the division, and I see the anger, and I see the violence, and I see the depression, and I see all the addiction, I ask myself, what is missing? And the sad thing is, is sometimes I'm seeing some of those stats that are actually the exact stats as the world. Like our relationships as Christians are suffering just as much as the world. And I start thinking, well, what's missing in the church? What's missing in this world? So we talked about the first week is relationship with God. We're missing a relationship with God. We're created to have a relationship with God. And until that's you start that relationship with God, something is going to be missing in your life. You, can't, you can take drugs, you can drink, you could, get, I mean, you could get together with as many people as you want, you could be in a big crowd, you could, be, you could start partying, but this is what's going to happen. You can make a lot of money, you can move up in your, in, in, in your career, but without a relationship with God, there's still going to be something missing. And, and this idea, the longer we live without God, the hole in our hearts, that void just gets bigger and bigger. The second thing we found out that was missing is our identity. Like we have a big, huge identity crisis. Like we don't even know who we are. I mean, we're suffering from identity crisis to the point that now we have 64 almost genders. You know, it's not just male and female, it's male, female, and a whole bunch of other stuff happening. We don't even know who we really are nowadays, and, and we're trying to identify. It's kind of like the, the 70s or the 60s when the hippies used to go out there, and their goal was to find themselves. So they went on a whole year not working and just going from one city to another city in a VW bus and, and just sex, drugs, rock and roll, trying to find themselves. And they found when it was all said and done, they were depressed, they were lonely, they, were, they became addicts, they became empty, emptier than the, when they started the whole journey. So we found out we have an identity crisis. And I'll tell you why, because you were created to be like God. And the more you're not like God, this is what happens, the emptier you're going to be. Something will be missing in your life. You are not created to be angry. You are not created to be unforgiven. You are not created to hurt others. You are not created to be self-destructive. You are not created to, none of those things you were created to be. You were created to be like God. And, and the more you become like God, the more peace you're going to have, the more joy you're going to have, the more purpose you're going to find in your life, being like God. And number three last week, what we covered is, what we're missing is faith. Like, where's the faith gone? And, and we see in the scripture where, where Jesus says, when I come back, will I find anybody that has faith on the earth? And, and that faith is developed. How is faith developed? By knowing God. The better you know God, the bigger your faith is. So we want our faith to grow because when our faith grows, we make more impact. When our faith grows, we go through trials and they don't overwhelm us. But 
How do I build my faith? There's only one way. Get to know God better. It's a relationship thing. The better I know someone, the more I trust them. So without faith, we're full of doubt, we're full of fear, and that's why we're becoming more fearful as a society. Anxieties are, anxiety is hitting everybody. And what's going on? Our relationship with God is suffering, which now which results with low-level faith. And Jesus talked to his disciples that they didn't have enough faith when they were dealing with, the spirit, with spiritual warfare. They were, they were trying to cast out a demon and they're going to cast it out. And they asked Jesus, how come you could cast out the demon and we couldn't? And he said, you don't have enough faith. What are you saying? You don't know God good enough to walk in, the, in, in a trust to cast out that spirit. So, so now the last thing we're going to cover today is what's missing in our society. And this is what's missing. Love. What's missing? Love. Let's cover this because I, I want to just, for just a few moments... I want to just, just talk about love a little bit because you're, you were created for relationships. You were created to love. You were not created to hate. You were created to love. Now let's look what love, the definition of biblical love is. It's to welcome, it's to welcome a word of kind greeting as to one rival gives pleasure. I'm going to stop there for just a second. When I think about the word love, this, this is agapao. This word describes the love of God. And I was, to my surprise, the first definition was the word welcome. Welcome someone's arrival with pleasure. It, when I thought about that is what he's saying, when you're loving people, you know what you are? You're welcoming. That means when you see someone, you're excited to see them. You let them know you in my life brings me pleasure. So when we welcome, this is what God does when we come to him. And you know how we come to him? We come to him in our sin. We come to him with our faults. We come to him with our issues. And God doesn't, like, God doesn't look at us and say, well, about time. Or why are you coming to me now? You're in trouble or what? Or before you come to me, why don't you clean up your act first? Or he doesn't say, man, your life disgusts me. You know what he does? When we come to him, he welcomes, he opens his arms, and he said, I am so glad you've come to me. I know the pain you've been going through. I know the wrong that you've been doing. And I want to let you know, you're welcome right here. They might have turned their backs on you. They might have quit on you. But I'm right here. And I've just been waiting for you to come home. I'm so glad you came home. Let me love you. Let me forgive you. And let me restore you. So when we come back to God, there's this whole welcome committee. He's happy to see you. And when we're walking in love, this is what happens. We're happy to see one another. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. What he was saying is, I am so glad to get together with my brothers and sisters. See, a church without love is a dead church. How horrible. I don't know if you've ever been in a church like this. We're not talking about any churches, but I don't know if you've ever been in a church like this. Where you walk in and everybody's like, it looks like they're at a funeral. They don't say hi to you. They don't welcome you. Nobody's smiling. I mean, who wants to be part of a group like that? See, this is what the church should be. The church should be the place we're, I want you to get, we're not here to be religious. We're not here to be the judges. We're not here to be critical. We are here to love people into the presence of God, into the kingdom of God. You come. We love you. And you know part of this is smiling. Someone smile right here. All right, praise the Lord. But the word love also means to have affection for have a desire to draw close to. It always means easily move to sympathy or compassion. You know what? When you're loving someone, you feel their pain. That means you're moved by their situation. When you're not loving, you're hard-hearted. You start thinking, oh, well, that's what they get. 
don't know if you've ever said something like that. You don't have to admit it right now, but that's what they get for the way they've been living. Of course, that's what they get. Right? So we have to be careful that we're not unloving and not kind. We, we have to be, I want you to get this. God, the, the greater love you have, the more sensitivity you have to other people's pain and hurt. God's totally sensitive about what you're going through. And he wants us to, a world without love is a world with no sympathy, a world with no compassion. It also means to be kind, gent, gentle, thoughtful, warm, caring, forgiven, yielding, merciful, responsive. It means ben, benevolent. That word benevolent is a desire to help others and meet their greatest needs. So I, I'm not only just trying to find needs, I'm going to do everything we can, I can, and we're going to do everything we can to meet those needs. We are not just a church. We are a benevolent church. We are not just a church. We are a merciful church. We're not just, come on, we're not just a, a church. We are a kind and gentle church. And you know what we need to practice this kindness at? I think the greatest place we need to practice this kindness at is here in church with our brothers and sisters, and you know why I say brothers and sisters? Because when you get close to people, you start finding out they got issues just like you. And that's why some people are going from church to church to church to church. They're trying to find a church with no issues. Well, a church with no issues is a church with no people. And they have an issue. They have no people. So, so what we... we do, Anybody that gives you a hard time, this is your opportunity for you to grow. You don't run, you grow. You mature through it. Why is this person getting on my nerves? I don't have enough love. That's the answer. Why are they getting, I don't have enough love. That's why they're getting on my nerves. And some of us as Christians are pretty edgy. I mean, your kids are in the car and, and someone cuts you barely off and you're all mad. Cussing people out you don't even know. And then you come to church. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, let's go to the word. So, so the, Bible, the Bible reminds us or warns us that love will be missing in the last days. So it talks about this. And in the last days, people will only love themselves and be unloving towards others. There's going to be a love, like a selfish love, but there will not be a love for others. And this is what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.1. It says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. In the last days will be what? And it will be difficult times. Or another version says it will be very dangerous times. Because where there's no love, there's no value for life. When there's no love, there's no what? So it's going to be very dangerous because nobody's life will be valuable. And it says, for people will love only themselves and their money. This is how it's going to be a dangerous time because people will only love themselves and their what? Their money. They'll love their money more than they love people. And what that means is they'll see a need and they'll say, no, I won't part from my money because if I meet that need, I got to part with some of my money. So I'd rather keep my money and let them suffer. And do you know that this is one of the main reasons some people don't want to be in church? Because they don't want to break with their money. Have you ever heard someone say something like this? I don't want to come to church because all they want is my money. And the truth is, nobody wants your money God doesn't want your money. God wants your heart. And the problem is, as long as you love money more than you love people, you love money more than you love God, God can never get your heart and you can never fulfill your purpose. So we're worshiping God and we're bringing something valuable to us to, to, to say, God, I love you and use this to touch somebody's life. You know what we're saying? We love you more than our money. So it'd be an unloving, unloving world. Look at this. It says, they will be boastful and proud. And what that means is that they'll talk about how I'm self-made. Look what I've done. And that all works until you stand before God. Scoffing at God. Basically saying, I don't need God. 
I don't need love. You got to be careful. It's good to be, it's good to be, I'll say this, it's good to have a business and it's good to do everything you can to make as much money as you can, reasonably, but be careful that you don't make that money your God. And how you know you're making money your God, when your money gets funny, you start treating people real bad. So the money will almost cause you not to have mercy. I was good until you touched my money. Because when you mess with my money, you're messing with me. It's getting quiet in here. Okay, we're, we're trying to get, they will be disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. What will they be? They will slander others, have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. And the scripture is saying that this unloving society is a dangerous society. It turns their back on each other. This, this unloving society produces kids that are rebellious and angry, ungrateful, violent. That's what it produces. And then, and then he's, the scripture is saying that they'll get to the point that there's going to be a whole bunch of people that act religious, but they have no love. Because it's a very dangerous time. It's a dangerous time because it's an ungodly society. An unloving society is an ungod society. Doesn't have God's attributes or God's power manifested in the society, in the families. And it produces self-destruction. You guys get that, right? So we have a love war. Say it with me. We have a what? Love war. The enemy is doing everything he can to destroy our love for each other, our love for God. And that's why there's so many times that we can be offended. And I've learned this. If you get offended with one person and you don't deal with that properly, this is what's going to happen. You'll start getting offended with two people, three people, four people, until it gets to the point you're just offended. And how you know, you're getting edgier. You're getting more impatient. People are getting on your nerves. You're just barely putting up with them. You're doing ministry, but you're doing it with the wrong heart. All right, praise the Lord. In these last days, it's going to get so dangerous. This is what's going to happen. Even Christians' love will grow cold. In Matthew 24, 12, an ERV, if you could put that one up, ERV, it says this. There will be so much more evil in the world that the love of most believers will grow cold. It'll be so evil in the world that even the love of believers will grow cold. That means that evil, or, or another word for evil, sin, this is what it does. It not only separates you from God, Every time we're involved in sin, we become more unloving. And that's why if you have a daughter or a son and there were nice little boys and little girls, they get introduced to the wrong crowd and they start getting involved in sin. It's like a demon took, took them over. And then you start saying, well, who are you? I don't even recognize this demon. Because sin, I want you to, sin doesn't just want, I want you to, sin comes with pleasure, but sin comes as a thief. Sin comes as a diminisher. So sin will never leave you in a higher place. It will always leave you in a lower place. Sin will never leave you more loving. It will lead you more selfish, more hateful, more, the Bible says, self-loving only. Right? So we got that. Last days. So why is love so important? Let's talk about that for a minute. Loving God and others, number one. Loving God and others is the most important commandment. 
Our love for others flows out of our relationship with God. Look at Matthew 22, 36. Teacher, which is the most important command? So why is love so important? Someone asked Jesus, which is the most important command in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. So he said the most important command is to have a relationship with God. The most important command is to what? To love God with everything. Now, we got to be careful that we're not deceiving ourselves in thinking that we're loving God, but we're not loving God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. What he's saying is, if you're going to love me, love me with everything you got, because that's how I love you. Are there all, any all-in believers here? I love God. Now, I'm not perfect, but I love God. Now, your love will be tested because... My love is tested, uh, I, I, my love is tested by options. The devil, what he does, he gives you options. Choose God or choose this. Choose God or choose this. And, and every time I say no to that, and I say, I don't want that because I got God. And if I, if I choose that, it'll separate me from God. No, I love God more than that pleasure. I love God more than that weed. I love God more than that unforgiveness. I love God more than that gossip. I love God more than religion. I love God more. Are there any sold out believers? I want you to get this. The reason is, is how can you love people if you don't love God? So what does that have to do with it? Because your love for people comes from your love for God. So the more you love God, the more you love people. Now, why am I saying that? Because there's a lot of Christians that are involved in ministry. What I mean by that? They're serving. They're working hard. They're punctual. They do all that stuff. But there's a problem. All that with no love. They're still short with people. They're not kind. They're rude. They're arrogant. They're religious. And oh, I love God. No, you don't. You don't love God. Because when you love God, you're kind. When you love God, you're merciful. When you love God, come on. When you love God, you're tolerant. Come on. You're able to love people through their mess. When you don't love God, you're critical. When you don't love God, I'll tell you this. When you don't love God, you're short with people. Well, I'm busy doing work. That's why. No. They need to get with it. No, slow down. The work is people. Don't get so caught up in your, uh, the things that you're doing that you forget to do it with the right spirit. Oh, Lord. Look, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, number one. This is the first and greatest command. This is first and what? A second, verse 39, Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine. 39. A second is equally important. A second is what? So he's saying is that loving God and loving people is the same, has the same importance. You know why he said it this way? Because some people really think I could love God and dog people. I love you, God, but I don't like people. And what God is saying here, if you don't love people, you don't love me because it's equal. We're going to be a loving church, amen? 2021, we're going to be a loving church one way or another. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, when I talk about this subject, I thought I would talk about it with a kinder, like gentler tone. And God says, no, it's war. He goes, it's not a kind or generous soul because there's a spirit that's trying to conquer your love. Because if it conquers your love, it conquers your purpose. It conquers your impact. Your relationship with God, amen. This, the first is the, the, this is the first and greatest command. And second, the second is equally important. Love your neighbor 
as yourself. Love, love who? Well, who's your neighbor? It's your actual neighbor that gives you a hard time at your home. Well, it's hard to love that person. I understand. That's why you need the love of God to love. That's a, it's an agapao. That's a love of God. You need God's love to love that person. But you know what I think about when I don't like someone? I go, God loves them. <laughs> and I go, man, God, how you could love that person? He goes, remember, I loved you while you were in your sin. I love you when you were a hypocrite. I love you. I, I, I love you. Oh, I forgot that. Right? You know what stops us sometimes from being more loving? You forgot where you came from. All right, let's keep going. Why is love so important? Number two, anything we do with no love amounts to nothing. Without love, anything you do for God amounts to nothing. Because God's not looking at just what you do. He's making sure you do it in his spirit. Doing it with his love. Because if we don't do it with his love, we're misrepresenting God. And we're doing more damage than good. That's why you can't let someone that's offensive conquer your love. And do you know that happens in church? Do you know not everybody that comes to church comes in the spirit? I mean, there's people come to church full of demons. That's like you wanted to go to a hospital that no one's ever been sick in it. That ain't no hospital. Sick people come to the hospital. And I want you to get sick people come to church. And this is what we do. We love the hell right out of them. I don't know. That, I, someone, someone just got offended. It's religious. Right now. Oh, my God. Did he cuss or did he? I, don't forget him. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm just saying they come in with hell. They come in with demons. They come in with hurt. They come with pain. They come with destruction. And what are we going to do? Address all that and try to fix them? No. We're going to love them right where they're at and just cast all that stuff out of them with the love of God. Let's give them a love overdose. Okay, let's keep going. We're almost done. 1 Corinthians 13.1. It says this. If I could speak in all the languages on earth, which none of you can, and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. What he said, if I could speak all the languages, I'm a master communicator, and, and I just do great sermons and all that. I could talk to anybody where they're at. He said, but if you don't have any love, all you're doing is just making a whole bunch of noise. Clang, 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 clang. In the spirit, there's no impact. It's a whole bunch of nonsense. Okay, Lord, please help us. We got to hear this word because we got to love each other. Come on. I, I, I know there's a spirit of division trying to attack your family. There's a spirit of pride trying to attack your life. There's a spirit that makes you critical. There's a spirit that makes you judgmental, even of your own church. Where'd you get that from? No love. It's only a symptom of no love. Let's keep on reading. It's just scripture. Don't get mad at me. It's just scripture. <laughs> We're all mad and don't mad dog at me right now. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all God's secret plans and possessed knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I'd be nothing. You know what he's saying? He's not saying that you don't have the gift. He's saying you have the gift, but the wrapping is really dirty. <laughs> it's having a gift wrapped in COVID-19. <laughs> now I'm bringing it home. 
You got a nice gift, but it's covered with, it's covered with disease. It's covered with death. It's covered with a bad smell. So I'd be nothing. No, it's not saying we're not gifted. You're gifted. Words of knowledge. And that's why you have to be careful that just because God's using you, because you have a gift, your gifts are without repentance, you could prophesy and not still be in the spirit of love. So when you start prophesying, it comes across critical. It comes across judgmental. It comes across angry. It doesn't come across with the spirit of God. And that's why Moses, when God told him to speak to the rock, to bring water, to people who are thirsty, he doesn't speak to the rock. He starts hitting the rock in anger. Ah, these people get on my nerves. So the rock brought out water. But this is what happened to Moses. He goes, Moses, you are not going to the promised land. You just disqualified yourself because you misrepresented me. The gift till, this gift still worked, but you disqualified yourself. Well, hallelujah. Look at this, last one. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. So without love, we gain what? Without love, we are nothing. The word nothing means to be without impact or result. No fruit. It means to fail. Of no importance, no advancement, unsuccessful, non-existence. Existent. You know what it means is? When we don't come with love in the spiritual realm, we are non-existent. In the spiritual realm, there's no power. There's no advancement. You got truth, but you didn't speak it in love, so therefore it had no impact. You know what that means? Before we do anything, we got to clean up our love walk. Clean up our love. Yeah, yeah. That means if you have an issue with somebody, you got to fix that thing and stop ignoring it. Because it's, a, it's contaminating your ministry. Okay. I got one amen over there. Praise the Lord. Every one of us are all of our souls like. No wonder. Bless no, bless no wonder. <laughs> And I'm gonna, one last thing. The main proof that we know God is our love for each other. Some say, show me the proof. Look at this. In 1 John, I was trying to sing this song last week on Wednesday. 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from, where does love come from? Where does love come from? God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. So love is a byproduct of relationship with God. The greater I know God, the more love I walk in. I love it. But anyone, look at this, who does not, does not, Know God? For anyone? No, whoever, but anyone who does not love does not know God. Now, don't be mistaken. You could know scripture and not know God. You could know how to sing and not know God. You could know how to bag a bag of groceries at our downtown campus and not know God. Because if, and the scripture says, he who does not love does not know. And some of us right now, we need to take an inventory. Because maybe we thought, I really know God. And God says, you kind of know me, but you really don't know me. 
the way you're supposed to know me, like you don't really know me because you, you really don't know how loving I am. Because if you really knew how loving I was, you would reflect that. But right now, all you see me as a God of judgment, a God that's criticizing your life, a God that doesn't forgive you, a God that wants to hurt you, and that's not me. So how could you represent me and you don't even know me? But I know scripture. Yeah, you know a lot of scripture. But the way you use that scripture is so harmful. It's so inconsiderate. It's so harsh. Praise the Lord. We're growing. Someone said we're growing. How many, how many think right now, just as we're going to end the sermon, just one more sentence. But how many feel like your love needs to grow after this sermon? If your love doesn't need to grow, just come up here. <laughs> if your love doesn't need to just come up here, and then you could teach us how you do it. Anybody? <laughs> I know my love needs to grow. Hey, come on, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not up here. You know why I preach? I preach to myself first. Like, Marco, you've been impatient. Where your love at, right? Let's end it with this. It says, um, anyone who, okay, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is, what is God? So when you're full of God, you're full of? God is love. You know what that means? God is kind. God is benevolent. He's always ready to help. God, you know, God is is merciful. God is gentle. God is forgiven. God is patient. We're just describing love right now. Right? God will sacrifice everything to have a relationship with you. He's sacrificial. There's nothing that would stop God from having a relationship with you. He's welcoming. Come, son, come, daughter, come the way you are. I love you. I want to forgive you. I want to restore you. I want to set you free. I love you. When you come into his presence, he's smiling. Some of us need to get a good, bigger, a different picture of who God is. Do you see him as a smiling, loving, and welcoming God? And as a church, what we're going to do, I'm going to have Pastor Robert come up here. But as a church, we're going to pray, God, help us to walk in your spirit. And we repent for doing ministry and keeping busy and forgetting to package it with your love. Because without your love, we're ineffective, we failed, we're not successful at reaching anyone. But with your love, your love is so attractive. Help me be more loving with my wife. Help me be more loving with my husband. Help me be more loving with those crazy kids. Help me be more loving with that wild, prejudiced boss I have. Help me be more loving with that local neighbor Help me be more loving, even to my enemies. Help me to display your love everywhere I go. Are you guys ready for this? What's, what's missing is the love of God, and we carry it. Pastor Robert, close this out, please. What a great word. Let's all stand up, you guys. And if you're at your home right now, you can stand up at this time. And let's bow our heads for a second, and let's just do that for a minute. Let's continue this whole sermon. God's just really allowing us to examine our hearts. And before the Lord today, before we leave, let's just, ex for God to examine us. And if we need to ask forgiveness for not loving the way we're supposed to, let's let it, let's, let's ask God, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, God, for not loving the way you love. Yes, Father, forgive us, Lord. Right now, you're here and every head bow, every eyes closed right now. Maybe you're at home right now. You're watching us online. One of the hardest relationships that we deal with, let's be honest, is family. A brother done us wrong, a sister done us wrong, or, and there's usually beef in between families. We all have it. 
the Bible says, you know, it gets to the point where God can't forgive us of our sins if we don't forgive those who have done us wrong. So if you need to forgive a family member right now, could be a, could be a mom, could be a father, could be a brother, let it go. Say, man, I, I let go of this unforgiveness. Let it go right now. Let it go. This is between you and God right now. If you need to forgive someone, forgive them right now. Don't leave this campus without just letting that go. It's going to free your heart up. It's going to fix the relationship between you and God. We can't hold grudges towards someone or beef towards someone and still have a relationship with God. It, it doesn't work that way. God says, I can't forgive you. If you don't forgive, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Father, we forgive all those that have hurt us. We forgive those that have maybe done us wrong or said things that hurt us, God. Hurt us when we were a child and the abuse, the physical abuse and the verbal abuse. We let it go, God. Fill us now with your love. Fill us now with your love. And we're going to end this service in a moment. If you need prayer, we have our prayer partners up here. We'd love to pray with you. And here's the last thing. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you've been backslidden, maybe you've been running from God, and you're saying, man, today I just need to give my life back to God. I'm done running. I'm done doing the things I've been doing. I just want a fresh start with God. If that is you, if you're saying, man, I want Jesus to forgive me of all my sins. Man, I need to make peace with God today. I want to make sure that my relationship with him is pure and it's clean and it's holy. Because if you die today, where are you going? If Jesus came back today, would you be caught up in the rapture? Are you ready to meet God? If you were to pass away today, would you be ready to meet the creator of the universe? Would you go to heaven? Are you right with God? I'm going to count to three. If you're saying, Pastor, that's me. And I want to be forgiven of all my sins. I want to come back to God. I've been running. I need a fresh start with God. I want, I want to start my relationship with Jesus. I want to make sure if I die, that goes straight to heaven. If Jesus came back today, I want to make sure I be caught up in the, the air with him. I want, to be, I want to make sure that I'm right with God. If that is you, maybe you're at home right now. You're saying, that's me. You're talking to me right now, Pastor. I need God. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I, I want to follow God. I want to come back to God. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up when I count to three. Again, why are you slipping your hand up? You're saying, Pastor, I want God. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I, I want to start my relationship with Jesus. I want to make sure if I die today, I would go straight to heaven. Pastor, I need to get right with God. I want to follow him 100%. That's me. When I count to three, get ready to raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. So I want to start that relationship with God. I think I see a hand there. I see a hand there. I think I see a hand there, ma'am. I see a couple hands there. Yeah. I want to start my relationship with God. I want to be forgiven of all my sins. I see those hands. Yes. All those who just raised your hands. I want you to come forward, come meet me up here in the front, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation day. Come on down. You're at your home right now. Just maybe stand up. You're at a watch party. Just stand up right there where you're at. Just say, that's me. I want to give my life to God. Come, 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 come. Yes. I see you right where you are. Yes, this is your day. Yes, good job, you guys. Yes, yes. And if you need prayer after this, our altar workers are going to be up here. We got one. We got two. We got three. Give them a round of applause right now. I know we had a, a lady there in the middle. Now maybe you can't make it up right now to the middle. We're going to make sure she receives Christ. And you're at your home right now. You're at your workplace. Say this prayer with us today, and you'll be saved. We'd ask everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. The Bible says when one comes to the kingdom, when one comes to the family of God, heaven rejoices they're throwing a big party right now in heaven big party in heaven yeah there's my son there's my daughter maybe you're at your seat right now and you're thinking man i should have went down there and it's okay just say the prayer right there where you're at god's going to meet you right there at your seat every head bow every eyes closed repeat after me say jesus i ask forgiveness of all my sins jesus come into my heart and become my lord and savior from this day forward I am a disciple. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, fill me and set me free.
from all my bad habits, all my addictions, and I forgive everyone who has hurt me. I let go of all unforgiveness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, we had another guy come up. Yeah, give him a round of applause. Good job, sir. Yeah. And if anybody needs prayer, come on up. Yeah, come on up if you need prayer. And this Wednesday, our watch party, Pastor Marco, Pastor Lisa, they'll be doing a tag team sermon this Wednesday. So don't miss it. If you don't, if maybe it's your first time here and you say, what's a watch party? Come see one of us after service. We'll explain it to you. If not, you can, of course, go on the app. You can sign up for a watch party. And all that is, is watching the service at home with a few people. And don't forget to adopt a family, you guys. Go on the app. If you want to adopt a family, go on the app. Sign up right there. Because next Sunday, after our services, we're going to deliver the presents to everyone next Sunday. God bless you guys. If God is for you, who could come against you? Have a great week. If anybody needs prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you guys.